is trying exotic new foods your number one priority when visiting a new country? Does a chicken hot pocket drizzled with honey and have crushed almonds on the top sound appetizing? Well, these are the eight most excellent delicacies of Morocco. From the national dish that's only eaten on a certain day of the week to the best tea that you've ever had, as well as my personal favorite. Keep watching to find out everything you need to know about these amazing Moroccan dishes. Get ready to crush your food tour through Morocco like a travel pro. Let's go. Now starting your day off, you're gonna have all the essentials. Energy, vitamin C, and because liquid diets are overrated nowadays, and a pastry. All of this in Morocco translates to a coffee, an orange juice, and a croissant. Very common breakfast in Morocco. If you are feeling a bit more peckish, they have a few more options that usually include a little bit of eggs. It was kind of their hungry man option. I was pretty hungry that day, which as you can see, it kind of came with some yogurt, some fruit, an omelet, cheese, olives. It was quite good. Moroccans don't seem to be big on big lunches. They have a lot more snacky lunches. Harira is an absolute classic. It's kind of like a soup and bread style lunch. It's very good. It's tomatoes, lentils, chickpeas. It can have rice and meat in it. So it's kind of just like a thick tomato soup and then you dip bread in it. It's super tasty and it's meant to be a light snack. And another lunchy appetizer-esque meal is zalouk. It's a type of Moroccan salad. It's fried eggplants, again with tomatoes, and it can either be hot or cold, but I got it a lot as an appetizer to a lot of my main meals. Now, tagine, the dish that everyone knows, it gets its name from the actual dish that it's cooked in. It's that earthenware clay pot. Now it's a North African dish, normally cooked with meat and vegetables, and it has those earthy spices. You got your turmeric, your cumin, ginger, cinnamon, saffron, and a standard one that you order seems to be with olives and almonds, kind of on top and within the dish. I would absolutely recommend trying this dish in a few different restaurants because they seem to be made a little bit different. Uh, in each restaurant and again with the different styles you can get you only veggie one you can get it with chicken you can get it with beef and you can get it with goat now this dish is couscous now this is the national dish of Morocco and this is a dish that's only eaten on Fridays now Fridays is a prayer day so obviously you know it's a day of prayer therefore it's a day of couscous this part is super important because they do actually only serve it on Fridays at a lot of restaurants. I'm sure there are restaurants that might have it, but if you're only in Morocco for a few days, say something like a Thursday to a Tuesday, you might only have that one Friday to possibly try couscous. So do make sure if it is Friday, that's your meal of choice. Okay, so pastilla, oh my god. It's like a chicken hot pocket, chicken pot pie. It's got this flaky outer crust on it and it's stuffed with chicken. Now, it can be stuffed with poultry and seafood and if you're getting a traditional high quality pastilla, it's made with, you guessed it, pigeon. The one I got was just chicken, but it was drizzled with so much honey, and I love honey, so it's biased, and sprinkled with a bunch of roasted almonds, and it was absolutely delectable. It's this perfect combination of savory and sweet, and it was just everything I wanted and needed in my life. Getting into the desserts, you have jauhara. Now, jauhara is like a crispy milfei. Now, if you know what a milfei is, it's puff pastry that's kind of layered with custard in the middle. Now, normally when you kind of take a fork, it has a nice flake to it, but it folds in softly. Jauhara is very crispy, so when you kind of take that fork, you get a lot of like snap. Now, it was drizzled with caramel, and it was... Wait for it. Keep waiting. Phenomenal. And the word Jauhara means jewel and gem, and it is very rightly named. Another simple dessert is Mahalabiya. Now this is a creamy Middle Eastern milk pudding. It's super simple. It's just corn flour, milk, and sugar, but then it's topped with traditionally some type of nuts. 
I was told when I got it for the first time, the pistachio one is the best. It's the Moroccan way. And I would honestly agree with that. It was very good with the pistachio. Lastly, another big dessert is patisserie Marocain. Now, that sounds very French, probably because it is, but it's just Moroccan pastries. Now, the key thing to note about this is it's an assortment of little pastries, but in the restaurants, from what I saw, they always seem to charge about 35 dirhams, which is about five Canadian dollars. And I would ask her, oh, it's five or six pieces. So it's like, okay, I never got it in the restaurant, but I noticed you'll see a lot of shops like these on the streets. And they'll be like, oh, like you just need to give me 10 dirhams, which is about a dollar for it. And then they hand you this bag 10 to 15 different pieces. So my recommendation would absolutely be to try these little Moroccan dessert treats, but don't get it in a restaurant because you will pay extra to get less. Find a little street vendor and buy it from there. Now, without a doubt, the best tea that you've ever had will be Moroccan tea. Moroccan tea is super simple. It is gunpowder green tea, so the big leaves that are rolled up into balls, and honestly just a shitload of mint and this hurts my heart but a shitload of sugar and traditionally it's always served in a silver tea kettle on a silver tray and i found there was a few options maybe this was the you know you're winding down at night option but instead of the gunpowder green tea it was made with lemon verbena i would recommend getting this at different restaurants it's not too expensive but if you're gonna consume a little bit more of it, I was having a decent amount of it. It's definitely a lot cheaper just to make from home. Cause again, it's only a little bit of tea, some mint, and you can get a giant bushel of mint for like two dirhams. But a key part of drinking Moroccan tea is you gotta create the bubbles. And this isn't some tourist, if it, I'm sure if you were to find a Moroccan on their own by themselves in a house, this is what they would be doing. But when you pour it, you have to pour like this. You just need to exaggeratively pour and go as high up as you can so that it splashes and makes bubbles. So my real raw review of all these Moroccan dishes is that they were honestly delicious. Everyone should absolutely try all of them. There's a few that you should try a few different times, like tagine, because there's a few different options of it. But if I did notice anything, a lot of these meals do somewhat lean towards that snacky vibe, which if you aren't spending a lot of time in Morocco, it is easy to eat all these because you can kind of have a few different lunches and then have your dinner and then the desserts are also kind of small and snacky. The fun part I found was that almost every single meal that you got, doesn't matter what it was, from pastilla to tagine to couscous, it came with usually an assortment of different salads like the zalouk and a few others. This is Moroccan salad. It's an appetizer. These are green beans. This is just rice with parsley. Olives, naturally, you have to have olives. Zalouk, carrots, beetroot. This is like cauliflower, but it's like minced up. It's so tasty. And then obviously you've got bread. But besides that, without fail, every meal came with a bowl of olives and bread. Look at all this bread. And it was that good, good French baked bread. And if you haven't already guessed it, I'll be checking the comments, but my favorite meal was the one I clearly talked about with the most amount of enthusiasm, and it was the pastilla. It was just so good. It was the perfect fusion of sweet and savory, and I find most dishes are very hard to hit that sweet and savory mark, but with the honey, the almonds, and just whatever spices they had inside it wrapped in a flaky crust, not too doughy, not bready. It was just, I, I, I just, I wish I had discovered that not on my very last day. It was my last meal of my last day. I left the next morning for the airport. But maybe it was a good thing because if I had found that the first day, I probably would have eaten that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day I was in Morocco. So subscribe to follow along for more real, raw, traveling tips and reviews all through my personal experiences to help you travel more effectively, have more fun while you travel, and to show you what the true wonders of traveling really are. And make sure to watch this video, especially if you're planning on visiting Morocco because it's everything you need to know about Casablanca.
Have I longboarded my way into your heart yet? Ooh.